Hey guys, Rev and Ron Gilock here with Christ Center Coaching, and I'm super excited today to have uh, a friend of mine, an incredibly creative person, uh, Mike Brennan. Mike is a uh, an artist, an, an illustrator, a designer. He's a man of many talents, um, and he is based in New Jersey. And his artistic, he's been doing art since he was a boy. Um, has been in a lot of uh, books, has done stuff for churches, uh, multiple websites, just super, super talented guy. Um, and what's one thing that I found interesting about Mike is he actually creates a new piece of art daily. So pretty cool. How's it going, Mike? Thanks for being here with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to this. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, I actually, um, we actually met through our church and then learned that uh, we were kind of wired similarly in, in some ways, um, really in the aspect of uh, creativity and depending on God in our work. So I wanted to invite Mike on to um, talk a little bit uh, about this more and really share more what he does and how he works um, with God. So Mike, I know you're primary, you describe yourself as uh, you are a creator and a communicator telling stories on pages and stages, which I, I love. Can you, can you explain that a little bit more for people who maybe have not been exposed to your work? Sure, absolutely. Uh, really what it comes down to is, you know, I have a lot of creative expressions, right? So <clears throat> the way that I've found easiest to talk about it is by using that terminology you used to use. And the creator part you know, is mostly visual art because that's my background. Uh, as you said, graphic design is really the thing that uh, I did for many, many years, still continue to do. Um, but that was really what I went to school for and, you know, um, was trained in. And from there, I also do illustration. Uh, that's part of my journey, which I'm sure we'll probably get into a little bit. Uh, and, you know, that can take form of many things. It could be custom pet portraits. Uh, I've done some yoga art. I've done pop culture art, so things that you see in like, say, Comic-Con, um, those kind of things, uh, where I'm basically a fellow fan of a lot of these different movies and shows about you know superheroes and things like that. Um, and then I also do live sketching events. So um, you know, I would go to an event or a conference and story tell the whole experience of the event uh, in, in chronological order by creating these individual art pieces uh, that say, hey, here's who the speaker is on stage, or here's what's happening at the crowd, you know, over on the side with the special event or whatever's going on. Um, so that's some of the things as far as the pages. I've also done some uh, three self-published books, as you mentioned, um, that really are just my art and uh, my kind of weird sense of humor sometimes uh, that comes out, and those are available on Amazon. And then, um, you know, as far as the communicator piece, um, I speak and I also... Uh, starting a, a podcast myself where I basically talk about creativity and from my journey uh, it, it ended up really important for me to establish a daily creative habit as you mentioned mm. and so I talk about like where did that come from um, my story you know share that with people so that they can see um, this is something that they can do themselves too um, and then talk about how do you develop a daily creative habit and then have the consistency to keep going, the longevity, and leverage that habit for your creativity in the long run. I love that. I always feel like a lot of entrepreneurs or creative people have really good ideas or creative concepts that never see the light of day mm -hmm. or are poorly um, executed. You know, why, uh, I guess maybe a better question is how can someone really gain some traction on executing their their creative ideas or, or you know I'm not I don't have the same art skills that that you do I'm creative in in other ways um, how can I get my vision or, or what I want to see uh, done well I think really it comes down to like I said developing a new habit mm -hmm. and a lot of times people don't really come at it from that angle they'll think well i have these ideas and at some point i need to move forward on it uh mm -hmm. and maybe there's a lot of roadblocks for them such as fear or lack of resources uh, they think they just don't have the time um so it's time management skills that come into play there could be a, a number of things that are the roadblocks for these people to actually executing on their ideas and so 
really it's taking a step backwards and saying, okay, let's, let's get the ideas. Yes. Let's write them down. Let's make sure we have some place that we're, you know, you know, cataloging these things, mm-hmm. but let's take a look at like how we do things and why we do things and then start to create this new habit so that you have a bias towards action because mm-hmm. really the only way that you're going to execute on these things is if you act right. Yeah. Uh, otherwise there's just these, you know, ideas that you mentioned. So in order to do that, sometimes we need to lower the bar a little bit and say, okay, instead of for me as a creative person sitting down and having this pressure that I put on myself to create this masterpiece mm-hmm. every time I sit down that I think I have to be brilliant and a genius. Or like perfect. That, yeah. Exactly. Or perfect. Right. Execute this thing perfectly. The, we need to, to dispel that and mm-hmm. say, you know what? We need to do a lot of work that is not great in order to get to the great work. Like the stuff that we see that's the, the brilliant stuff and the genius work, like that's the highlight reel stuff. You know, we talk about that in terms of social media a lot, right? Not comparing ourselves to somebody else's highlight reel, all the great stuff that they're posting on their social media. Well, the same thing with, with the artwork, right? The, a lot of times the things that, that people are showing and, and that we want to put out there, that's the great stuff. That's the brilliant stuff. But they're not seeing all the work behind the scenes that's happened where they've done all these iterations, they've tried different things and failed. And then they're like, well, I'm not going to put that on public because it's not ready yet. So I'm just going to kind of put this over here. But then they don't really talk about that because that doesn't necessarily make somebody look great or they just feel so, you know, kind of um, insuperior somehow or the insecurities rise up. So how did you so- get over, over that? You, like you have the, like you, you're, you're explaining this super, super well. How did you personally get through that fear of putting yourself out there and, and overcoming what will people think of my, my art or, or my website or whatever. Yeah. Um, so for me, I spent a long time in just showing up and trying to like do a good job, but I didn't do a good job as far as owning my own creativity. Right. So I'd be like, okay, I'll show up. I'll do a great job. Just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. So I didn't have ownership of it. Uh, for a really, really long time in my own journey. Um, and, you know, my journey kind of, I, I ended up going through an experience where, you know, I took 10 years off of art. Um, I left graphic design field. I went into full-time ministry. Um, and during that time, I didn't really do much art. I did some things maybe for the church related to branding or some things like that, um, or managed some other people who were actually creating some things. But for myself, I didn't do any personal art and eventually came to this place where I fell into depression. And, um, I really was kind of getting messed up inside because I wasn't really being who God created me to be as a, as a creative. Right. And so I had to try to find my way back to that. And it really felt like God calling me back to that and saying, Hey, I need you to just show up today. Do you have enough strength to show up for today? And for me, that's, that's where it was. So it was like, everything was stripped away. I was at this place where I'm like, I just, I don't know that I even feel like I have anything else to lose. So, and I know that I need this. And so I'm not going to put the bar up here. And I started reading some books and they were talking about doing a 365 day art journey. And they said, you know, can you show up and do a five or 10 minute drawing? And I was like, probably. You know, I think I can muster that energy and I think I have that time to be able to do that. And, and the, the person who was writing this book said, you know, a five or 10 minute drawing is so much better than no drawing. Yes. So let's start there. And sometimes we need to bring it all the way down to that point of going, okay, you may not have the, the t- you know, energy, you may not have the time that you think, the expectations, we need to just lower this down and go, okay, let's get to a place where you're just showing up and doing daily deposits, right? Because we understand this in terms of like exercise, right? If we go to the gym a lot, we know that there's going to be results, right? Right. We know that we'll lose weight, we'll feel better, you know, all those things. The same thing applies for our creativity and our execution. So if we make these small deposits along the way, in the beginning, it's not really even so much about the actual work that's getting done. It really is more about developing the habit of showing up. And so when you start to do that and you, you give yourself the grace and the space to be able to just show up and make those small deposits, then you start to see some momentum coming. 
And then with momentum comes change. And then you just continue to leverage that habit that you've put into place, right? So you're putting it on a calendar, you're showing up at the same time, same place, you have your materials out, whatever it is that you have to do, all that's there. So you don't have to ramp up every time and think, oh, where did I put that stuff? Or, oh, I got to figure out in my day, where can I carve out some time? You, you, you establish that all ahead of time. And then you just keep showing up and momentum really does take over. And it's a lot easier to continue that stuff than it is to not, you know? Man, I love that, that, that habit of like the daily routine of taking time to intentionally um, do a little bit of work. And I think that's so true. Like, you know, every time, like I, I do videos and, and blogs and stuff, but every, every one I create is not, like you said, it's not a masterpiece every time. You know, we have to, uh, you know, go through that process to really get the consistency of the habit. And it sounds like your work gets better and gets traction uh, over that. So I love that. But I have another question about your, your kind of daily routine. Sure. Uh, you know, kind of the, the title of uh, the, blog, the blog post people are seeing this on is, is creating with the creator, creating with God. Um, so in that, that daily time where, where you start creating, how does your, your Christianity, how does your faith come into, uh, come into mix with your work? How do you integrate those? Yeah. So as I mentioned, you know, from the beginning, really, I felt like it was a call back to my art, right? And I believe that that was God entering into that moment and saying, look, I want to invite you back to this, but this is going to be different this time. Um, And so I had to kind of relearn some things. And and honestly, I'm continuing to relearn some things, right? We're all on this journey. But for me, like, it was always difficult for me when I was younger to try to figure out, well, how do I express my faith through art without it being either so like overt and kind of clobber somebody over the head with my faith, which I didn't want to do. I didn't want to alienate somebody. Right. Um, But I wanted to be sincere. I wanted to be a sincere expression of who I am, who my, you know, my relationship with God, my thoughts about him, my faith. And so some of that, comes in the form of my approach and how I do my work. And then some of it comes in the theme of my work. And so about your, your approach, I think for the, the, the creatives and entrepreneurs wa- uh, watching this, really dissecting that process of, of how do you go to God? What is it? What does it look like? Can you give us a little more behind the scenes for that? Sure. Yeah. So uh, honestly, I pray a lot and I ask God, I say, God, like, you know, you see everything, right? So you know where people's needs are. You see things that I can't. You have access to people that I don't have access to. Mm -hmm. And so I want to show up and bring the things that you've gifted me to do. And I want to be able to meet the other people and, you know, have my work meet needs uh, that they have. And so I need your help in identifying who those people are and where those needs are. Mm -hmm. So... It's asking God and it's saying, listen, I realize that you are the source of all of this. You're the source of my creativity. You're the source of the talents that you've given me. Uh, I belong to you and I believe this world belongs to you. And so, you know, you're the one who's going to orchestrate these events. I'm going to show up and do my work and I'm going to ask for guidance. I'm going to ask that you would orchestrate um, conversations and events. And as I go about my day, I'm going to be, my job is to be alert. And to be obedient, to be like, okay, God, so you're telling me you want me to go over there and work with that person. Or, you know, uh, if I have a certain creative idea. So I'm, I'm a lot of times for my daily ideas and things, I try to incorporate other people as much as I can. Uh, sometimes that takes the form of if I'm inspired by, say, somebody's uh, Instagram post, they posted a photo or something. I see something in that photo. I'm like, that, that's inspiring me right now. So I want to take that, use that as a guide and kind of redraw it or somehow bring whatever that person posted about into my own post, tag them, repost it. So that it becomes something of like, Hey, you inspired me to help create this art. And now I just want to say, Hey, I acknowledge that. I thank you. And that I see you. Right. Um, And so a lot of times I'm praying and I'm going, God, who, who needs encouragement today? Who's the person who needs to um, have my art touch them in some way, bring some joy. 
And so I don't know those things. Only God knows those things. And so I try and go through my days really open-handed and ready to respond, you know? So it's, I know, uh, I, that's why I say, you know, it's, it's, it's this collaboration with God because he's not going to do it all, right? He invites us to the work, um, but I can't do it all either. Um, I'm not supposed to, right? Uh, and so it's this, let's come together. God, you've gifted me. You've, you've given me these abilities. Now let me do them in such a way that's faithful to uh, the assignment and the station that you've given me in this, in this life. That's awesome. So you're literally connecting with God. Like the Bible tells us to you know, live life by the, by the spirit. So you're constantly kind of just open to these Holy spirit promptings for you to create or, or partner with someone and move forward that way, which is just awesome. Um, you know, Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered. So we're definitely seeing that there. That's really cool. Um, when you are creating, or after you have created the, the art instead, and, or whatever you're, you're working on, you know, a lot of times I feel there is the, people can, sit, can just let the art sit there on their website or their content there and just say, okay, God, like do it now. And like, I'm gonna go sit on the couch and, and watch Netflix. <laughs> um, but where, where is the balance between like, uh, you know, trusting God for people to, to buy your work or, or hire you. And then also this, this selfless serving, this selfless giving of, of, of artistic expression to people, how you were just, just describing. Yeah. You know, that's something that I have struggled with a lot, to be honest, and continue to, to try to, do. Yeah. yeah, you know, you, you need to find that balance, right? It's not all or nothing. And I've done, you know, I've had seasons where I'm feverishly trying to push forward projects and ideas. And just, if I throw enough stuff out there, um, you know, eventually something's going to hit the mark and something will click with somebody and, and, you know, just producing, being this machine of content and just throwing it out there and, and more and more and more and more. And the problem is that in that mode, you get burned out you get to this point where you're just like, this is not sustainable. Um, it's not healthy. And there's this almost serving the system that you've set up to put this content out there that happens. It's like where, it's the joy. From yes. It. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, it's tricky because yes, you, ha you do have to work hard. You do have to show up, but it's working strategically. And it's working in such a way, again, that I think that piece has to be there of like, God, this is what I think is the best next step. Mm -hmm. But is it? I'm going to be open-handed. I'm going to start to do the work. I'm going to move forward unless you tell me otherwise, unless there's something else that you say, mm, let's, let's go this way instead. Or awesome. even if I'm struggling with something of going, I'm not sure what the right next step is. I'm like, God, would you fill me in would you let me know like what is the best course of action right now yeah. um what are the projects that you want me to be involved in who are the people you want me to work with and walk with um how do you want to use my art in this season and so you know it's not just a pray that sit back and go okay and there's no emails rolling into my inbox there's no you know <laughs> nobody's calling nobody's what you know you have to show up and and do some work and start down some roads and go, okay, let me go this way. But all the while, very open handed going, you know, God, if at any moment you want to change direction, you want to do something new or different, then I want to be open to that because ultimately the posture of my heart is towards you. It's mm -hmm. towards what your desires are, not what I think is best or not what the latest, um, people you know in the space are telling me to do or any opportunities that happen to look amazing or that I think that I would really love to do is because at this point in my life I know myself enough that the things that I think I really want a lot of times they're not necessarily the best things or God has something better and so looking back I can go wow that's amazing that that didn't work out because I can only imagine if that had taken my time or my resources or taken me down a certain path, like that would have just not been the best thing at all. 
but I was disappointed when that didn't work out at first. And I was like, ah, come on, like, I'm like, what's up with that? Like, why, you know, why isn't this happening? Um, but really looking back, you can see, no, that was actually God's hand of protection going, mm, let's, let's not go there, you know? Wow. So there's such power in that place of, of dependency on him for you. Like it, I, uh, this is one of the reasons I wanted to, to have you on because um, it, it definitely sounds like you have made God your, your CEO um, and you're more of like the manager at a direction from him and then um, moving forward. It's just, uh, it's just really awesome. Um, I had another question for you. Um, how do you, so a lot of times, a lot of times people will put their program out there, their, um, their art, their blog, their podcast, whatever, and it totally flops. It, it fails. And I know at times I have struggled with, well, this is sort of an extension of myself and people don't like it. <laughs> so, um, have you had to struggle with, uh, that process of, of or of sort of detaching from like your art or the feed or the feedback and, and who you are versus what you made. How does yeah. that look like? Yes. Um, that is very, very difficult and can be very painful, right? As you mentioned, because we want our art or whatever it is that we're creating um, to be that representation of us, or it's almost feels like it's, you know, a lot of times we'll be like, that's our baby, you know, um, where there's, there's another business leader that who, um, I follow and, and, you know, she's always saying like, you're, it's your business. It's not your baby. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to keep that perspective. Um, and, and if you approach it that way, you start to say, okay, it's okay to experiment with things. Um, it's okay to try things. And a matter of fact, you should. And when you try things, you're going to fail not everything's always going to work out right. So I have definitely had my fair share of things that I put out there and I thought this is going to be amazing and people are going to flock to it and it's going to make money and on and on and on. And it's like, you know, nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're like, Ugh, you know, and the thought of like, I've put all that time, energy and effort, sometimes finances into this thing mm -hmm. to try to put it out there. And then all of a sudden it just falls flat. Um, those are the moments I found where I'm like, okay, let me be humble enough to ask the questions of like, why? Like, why didn't this work? Was this me being blind where I'm like, I'm an artist and I'm going up on the mountain and I'm going to create my work and bring it down to the masses and go, here, I have created, <laughs> you know, <laughs> here it is, people. Um, and they're like, yeah, we didn't ask for that. We don't really want that that's great. Like, uh, you know, kudos to you, but, um, doesn't really meet a need for me or doesn't really speak to me. Uh, I have been in that situation far too many times, uh, unfortunately. And it's painful to learn to go. Yeah. I need to, to make sure that I'm talking to people beforehand and I need to make sure I'm inviting people into the process, asking questions, making sure that I'm getting feedback, you know, from the right people. Right. Um, Not just our random Facebook. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, and then have, have a tribe of people that you're, you're with, that you're traveling with, that you're working with that, you know, fellow entrepreneurs or artists that you can trust that are on their own journey. And you go, Hey guys, I'm do I'm, I'm trying to do this. So this is what the idea is. What am I not seeing? Mm. Or can you help me launch this thing well, right? That's one of the things I had to learn and I'm continuing to learn, which I'm, I'm, I've been bad at is thinking, well, I've created this thing. I'm going to put it out there. And you know, you put out some blog posts or you put out some social media posts and maybe, you know, buy a Facebook ad or whatever it is. And you think, okay, this stuff is going to like generate enough and maybe cut through the noise enough, but it doesn't. And, yeah. yeah. And you need people around you who are going like, okay, I'm going to help be your launch team. I'm going to help cheerlead and also put this stuff out to my, my channels and find people that you can um, link arms with who are influential in other spaces that maybe have a bigger audience that you do that you can help serve them in their audience. And then you start to make those connections and those relationships, leverage those and go, okay, I think this would be great for your audience. Um, 
you know, would you love to partner on this and get this in front of your people so that I can help them. And then I can help you look like a rock star too, you know? So awesome. all those type of things all play into that learning curve of it's not just me creating my thing. It's much bigger than that. And I think it's supposed to be bigger than that because we're created to be in community. Mm. Um, and a lot of times when it's our thing, it's our business, where the solopreneurs or whatever terminology you want to use, right? I think that puts a pressure on us to think it's just me. I'm going mm. it alone and I got to do it at all. And I need to figure it out at all. And, and that's just not really a, a successful path. I don't think. Um, Cause I know for myself when I've tried that, those are the moments where I fall flat. Those are the moments where I'm like, oof, I did it again. Like in my own strength, solo, exactly. I got it. I'm exactly. It. I isolate. Yeah. So it sounds it sounds uh, more the beginning of, of the answer, it kind of set the tone for the rest of it, where your uh, your past failures and things that didn't go how your expectations were really turned into growth periods or, or places that okay. You know, I need, I need you, God, or I need other, other people. Um, so I think that was really wise. That's something I picked, I just picked up listening to you, um, kind of answer, answering these. Um, you know, Mike, as we're, as we're wrapping things, uh, things up here, um, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that, um, and, cre and creatives that are just starting out, or maybe we had a few years under our belt and we still feel like we're flying by the seat of our our pants trying to to find uh, the rhythm there or find your sweet spot and, and really hone into what god's you know calling calling you to do um what would you say to the person really just trying to you know start out or go deeper with integrating um their passion their creativity with uh their faith and, and being a co-creator with god so I think it really comes down to your intimacy with God for so much of this, because if that's not in place, then you're not going to have that heart and that posture. Um, you're not going to have the sensitivity nor the desire to, or maybe the even thought to say, Hey God, like, what do you want to do in this? Or mm -hmm. God, I'm seeking you in this. Because then it's more of, well, this is what I need to do. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to do my thing. And then it's going to lead to another thing. And then you're just kind of either following whatever happens to open up before you or following your own inclinations, which, you know, I've said a lot of times we can be wrong. Mm. Um, so I think really the first thing is to make sure that we are having a place where we're seeking God on a regular basis. For me, I started journaling when I was like 18 years old. A lot of that came out of teenage angst and, you know, girl problems and whatever else. Right. Sure. Um, but I'm in there and I'm journaling and I'm like, I'm writing my own Psalms. You know, I'm like, you know, I'm a creative. So of course it's that. Yeah. yeah. You know? um, but I, I'm writing and I'm praying and I'm, I'm journaling and I'm pouring all that stuff out to God. And, and the more that you do that on a regular basis, you know, and I dare say a daily basis, um, then you, you cultivate that heart and that desire to be able to go, okay, let's do this, God. What is it that you, you want to invite me into? Where are you already at work and where can I join you? As opposed to here's my thing, bless it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's the thing, man. Like so many people I think uh, struggle with that exact thing that I have this idea or I have this vision and I feel like it's God inspired and now go. And <laughs> We take off, um, and God almost becomes like a magic ATM machine that we're going to for this other purpose. Like, let me go to him to get that. Um, and you're not saying that at all. That's kind of the opposite of what you're saying. I think what I'm hearing you say is that your art and what you're doing now is a natural expression of your intimacy and relationship with God. So you're just glorifying him through what you do and how you work just because that, that heart posture and that relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Man. Well, cool. I think that's a great place for us to, um, 
to wrap it up. Um, Mikey gave a bunch of resources that will be below this video and in our, in our blog, uh, blog post. If you guys want to connect with Mike, you can reach out to him on Facebook or, of course, at his website, mikebrennan.me. Again, that's mikebrennan.me. Mike, is there anything that you'd like to uh, leave our, our viewers with today? Any uh, last words of encouragement or, or final uh, sign-on? I would just say be encouraged in the work that you're doing. Seek to have that intimacy with God and know that if you're struggling, like keep at it, but be open-handed mm -hmm. and do it in such a way that you truly come to believe, if you don't already, that God wants the best for you, that he's not playing a game of hide and seek, that he's not trying to frustrate you to like have you figure out something that's cloudy. But we, we have a God who is a, a creator God and he loves us and created us. And so with that, he's got plans and purposes that we may not even have any clue about. And so be in contact, be in communication with God and be open-handed and open-hearted in the way that you approach your work, how you do your work and the relationships you have within your work. Um, and love God and serve people. Really, that's what it all comes down to. Love God and serve people. Man, that's beautiful, Mike. What, I couldn't ask for a better answer. That was great. So guys, again, thank you for watching today's uh, interview. And again, connect with Mike Brennan on Facebook or mikebrennan.me for all your creative uh, creative needs and, and work. Mike, thanks again for being here. I had a blast chatting with you. Um, thank you. We can do this again in the future. Thanks for coming on. Awesome.